Welcome to Beyond Sunday. I'm Steve Ingold, Livermore Campus Pastor. This is John Orozco. Hello, hello. Leads all of our worship leaders, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and you made an appearance on the Livermore stage today. I did make an appearance. I don't know if it was a good one, but I was there, and things were said. <laughs> you did you say some I things. Said I stuff. thought I thought you said some stuff that had a lot of significance and value. Okay, thank you. I don't Appreciate remember that. any of it, but. Well, neither do I. So good, good we're good, on the same good. page. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're great, man. It was awesome having you up there, and uh, and it's cool that we have this series called "Go Tell It" right now, where mm-hmm. you. This is literally based off of a song that, not that you wrote. You kind of changed a song up. I love right? this song though. Yeah, "Go Tell It on the Mountain." Yeah, we came up with our own own version of this a few years back, and every time we get to this season, I'm like, yes, we finally get to play this song. And yeah. we, our church loved it so much. We're like, let's just call the series, go tell it. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, I don't know what it is. Like there's certain seasons where you get super pumped about a thing like playoff time this year. I can't wait to put on my Lakers jersey. You know what I mean? You know, this, you know this, what I'm saying? This podcast always moves to basketball <laughs> somehow and Stockhouse isn't even here today. It so. took us like two seconds. Yeah, You took it there though. That's your fault. Well, you know, it was <laughs> on topic, but. Well, so John, this week we talked about Isaiah, the prophecy that Isaiah shared Mm -hmm. and you walked into this going, Hey, there's some things that, you know, prophecy is just kind of weird or it's a little different. What are your, what are your thoughts? Why, what makes prophecies so important? Yeah. Prophecies are extremely important, especially in this context, because the prophecy that we're focusing on is who Jesus is and what he came to do, but it happened in the past. And so we're talking about, Christ being born and just sort of the fulfillment of what so many people long for, what we've been waiting for. And so, I don't know, I just kind of thought about why this is an important thing to talk about leading into the start of this Go Tell It series. Why would we start back rather than just right at where Jesus was born? And uh, something triggered the other day. I was watching my wife, Rebecca, and she was on the table with our son, Noah, and they were building this puzzle. And then I walk by, of course, I'm like the, the cynical guy. And I go, hey, yeah. hey, hey, look at this picture. Like, that's what, that's it. You're done. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what it becomes. That's what it right is. There. So like all these puzzles right on the front have the full picture. And they've got another picture that you take out and you see it. And this is what we're going to make. And I told her, I was like, puzzles, honestly, they don't make sense to me because it would be way more fun if it was just like a black box. You didn't know what the picture was. And that's how you started and that's how you made it. <laughs> and you are super cynical that you would just walk. You, how much joy did you steal? from It was so that fun. I was, hey, that's what you guys are making. <laughs> <laughs> but how that relates to prophecies is prophecies is one category of our faith that helps to give us the full picture hmm. of what we believe in. We, we find through the Gospels who Jesus is and what he was all about, how he lived, what he asked of us. And then you discover, you go to the book of Acts and you see the way that his life would like affect the world through the disciples, sending Mm. the Holy Spirit and all this change transformation that would happen. And then you look even further out and you go, okay, this is what Jesus is ultimately going to do in Revelations. When he comes back, he restores all things and you have this really like huge picture of who Jesus is in the New Testament. And the Old Testament has this thing where it's, sort of foreshadowing what's Mm. coming. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of it is, is that it gives us a fuller picture, just like that picture that was on the table. Mm. And my wife was using it with our son Noah to be able to make this puzzle. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, because I have like the information of what to look for, this full image, this full picture, I can make the puzzle. And because we have this full account, this full narrative from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament, and you see the Gospels, you see the workings through Acts, who he is and what he's come to do in Revelations, and you have the prophecies that are telling, hey, trust, believe, mm-hmm. have faith. Like Then you go, oh, Jesus, I identify you in so many different places because like my view is of this full picture mm-hmm. of who you are. You know, I think, I think that's the thing that I love about just e- even this Isaiah prophecy that we walked through this weekend mm-hmm. is it's speaking directly to the coming of Christ Mm -hmm. 700 years before Jesus would show up. Yeah. And man, I mean, I I spoke about it a little bit, but just the like, Hey, don't worry. 700 years from now, Jesus will show up. Like they're they're not seeing the full picture. No, they don't get to just turn the page like we do in scripture. 
Yeah. But how cool is it that we know God with us and we experience right. God with us and yeah. and and we do know the whole story. You know, I th- I think like if you don't if you don't see every little piece of how that works along the way. And, and I I was in Phoenix this past weekend with my mm-hmm. wife's extended family for for Thanksgiving and my cousin actually happens to own a jujitsu gym there. Okay. Yeah. And uh fascinating guy but he doesn't have any any family it's my wife's family that mm-hmm. lives there mm-hmm. he moved there on his own probably 12 years ago or so mm-hmm. and he worked at red lobster for six seven eight years mm-hmm. making 275 an hour yeah and wow yeah it's i mean arizona's that's got a thing some, some standards okay yeah and the uh, <laughs> the he worked so hard and eventually he lived in Thailand for a year and mm-hmm. learned Muay Thai and mm-hmm. taught jujitsu and then came back. But I got to go and see, he owns his own gym now. Yeah. And I got to go see. And then at, at the end, I, we went out to, to lunch together and he told me about this guy who has been coming to his gym for the last month, mm-hmm. whose daughter's been coming for the last like six months. Mm-hmm. And she, her, his daughter tried to get him to come because he had PTSD from mm-hmm. being overseas yeah. at war yeah. and he was just really having a tough time and he couldn't even, he could barely walk into the gym. Mm-hmm. Well, finally his daughter got him in and this guy's been going for the last month and it's radically changed his life. Yeah. And it's so cool that I have the opportunity to know the full story, the full story. Yeah. And I know what that hard work was and why, what it all led to. And yeah. I, I, I kind of think that with, when it comes to prophecy and, yeah. and even this, this concept of God with us, like to know, everything from the beginning of time yeah. through all the all the the Old Testament history that we uh-huh. that we read, the law that we read into the prophets and what all the prophets spoke of of Jesus' coming. Yeah. My goodness, it's so incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, so like on the onset, you drive by all of these stores mm-hmm. and you go, Oh, that's just a, a I don't know, a piece of place or that's just a but you get the full picture because you go, that's more than a jujitsu Gym, yeah. Gym. Right. Like, this is a place that took a lot of hard work that is meeting people's needs. It's connected to people and it's so loving. But you can only know that if you like take the time to look at mm-hmm. the whole all of the this. whole picture. And through yeah. all of this, like you're saying, God mm-hmm. is with us. Mm-hmm. There was no category of this where he was like distant. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I and like that's that's our story too. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's a story that we're a part of. That's a narrative that we get to. Yeah. Which is so incredible. So how do we, how do we like take that whole thing of knowing that there's so much depth to the things that we experience, to the things that are impacting us now from the prophecies through Jesus, through what's to come and the interactions that we have today. Like how can we have deep, meaningful interactions that have that same substance? Yeah, I think that's kind of the concept of this of this series, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where there's all these people that were that were told of the coming of Jesus, mm-hmm. and they they then were able to the story came through them. Mm-hmm. What does it mean for us now, two thousand years later? Mm-hmm. And I think about just the, our concept today. The the quote that's hanging in my wall: "You can't preach good news and be bad news." Mm-hmm. It's a, like we all, I think we've all heard playing sports or whatever. Yeah. You don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah. Or actions speak louder yeah. than words yeah. you know, or all stuff that my dad said to me when I was a kid. <laughs> and, and I think that's, and you talk about those interactions or those moments. Mm-hmm. There's so many opportunities, especially during this season. Mm-hmm. And I'm, now I'm going to go somewhere else. I remember grow, growing up, we'll come back to this in a minute, okay. but I remember growing up I, I'm kind of a Scrooge when it comes to Christmas. Okay. Like, I don't like decorating. Yeah, you and me both. I was really? supposed to do the lights. Well, you're super cynical. They still haven't done it. <laughs> My wife was like, we're going to do this while you're gone preaching this weekend. So, okay. <laughs> I was like, cool. Yeah. yeah. And, but anyway, I like, I couldn't stand it. And I tried to figure out why. And I think it's because mom and dad are pastors mm-hmm. and they were always away counseling people mm-hmm. and dealing with everyone else's issues because issues hit so hard during yeah. the season. Yeah. And I think. So that's why I don't like Christmas, but that's neither here nor there. But I think that's where we have such a huge opportunity Mm -hmm. as the church Mm -hmm. to know that there is so much like this paradox of hope and despair is real and valid and and alive right now. Mm -hmm. Despair is is a real deal in people's lives right now. Mm -hmm. So how do we as the church make sure that every interaction we have Mm -hmm. or you were saying something earlier about 
like what your goal is? Yeah, th- when I go into stores, I have this goal to be like the most loving, kind person to any, whether it's a cashier, somebody at the checkout. Like there's people who are going through real things that like might have had a really rough day and rude customers and they need someone to just smile at them and tell them that they're doing a good job. Um, to feel that that love that mm. we have the capacity to offer and to give and so I know for me in my life there's been folks who've just randomly just been super kind and that's I don't know it brightened my day in a way that was so unexpected and how sad how tragic it is that that is the thing that's sort of not common you know mm-hmm. and so I guess in the same way because of what I know about who Jesus is and because of the way that's sort of informed my life and my living and because of the way that I want that to change people's futures, like I kind of remind myself when I go up to those places, be as kind and as loving as you can. Because most of those interactions are so like anemic, mundane, routine. You go there, you get your stuff in kind of an entitled way, hurry up and check me out. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I need to get onto my, my day. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that's the, the line we use for this. Hurry up and check me out. Yeah. I hope that's the line yeah, we yeah. use for this podcast. Hey, hey, hurry up and check me out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, just to be able to I, pause, you know, yeah. just be kind. I think mm-hmm. that's so valuable. Well, it's stuff we're singing about. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're, you and our other worship leaders are prompting us mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. during this holiday season to mm-hmm. sing about this joy mm-hmm. and this life and this, mm-hmm. um, you said something tonight, like vibrance or mm-hmm. something that, that comes with Christmas. Yeah. This yeah. anticipation, it's like, can we live that? Yeah, absolutely, you we know? should. Yeah, we mm-hmm. do that, and man, the month of December, it's not only good for us, it's good for our souls, because it feeds us in a way when we give that way, but it changes the nature of the environments that we, you just elevate each environment, all those reasons, and it has so much substance because it's informed by who Jesus is, why he came, and what he came to accomplish through his church. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, man. Well, do you have any uh, parting wisdom or insight for our church? Parting out of wisdom. The, coming out of this weekend? We didn't prepare for this at all. I'm putting John <laughs> on the spot right now. I don't know if I have anything wise. I would say all week you should re-listen to this message because it's really important. Hmm. And you're going to get connected to a people who were in the middle of captivity who needed to understand sort of the principles of faith and trust. Because I know that many of you, if you're like me, there's things that I'm conflicted with. And to know that there's other stories that have existed in history or even today presently that they just hung on and they held on and they trusted and believed in the Lord and he came through, whether it's over a span of years or in a matter of moments, like God is faithful. He is with us. He's mm. God with us. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I would re-listen to that and consider understanding, hearing prophecies in a new way where you go, man, this is actually really important for me to understand just because of the way that it built my faith and my trust in God for things yet to come. Yeah, that's huge. And and even just to, yeah, I think to read maybe through Isaiah or mm-hmm. there's so many different prophecies that speak of Jesus coming. Yeah. So cool, man. Appreciate you. Glad we had a chance to do this. This was fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. Love you guys.